Of the four phenotypes of obstructive sleep apnea, which one might be considered um, the greatest risk in terms of increased mortality? So the four phenotypes are including peak crit, um, which is the pressure at which the airway collapses, and loop gain, which is the stability of your breathing during sleep. Arousal threshold is the propensity to wake from sleep. And upper airway recruitment is the amount of stimuli required to activate the upper airways. In a paper published in 2018, um, it looked at 5,712 participants and over 11 years there were 1,290 deaths. What's interesting about this paper and this study was that it was the individuals with the shortest duration events who had the greatest risk. It wasn't the individuals who were stopping breathing for 90 seconds, but it was the individuals who were stopping breathing for say, they had moderate sleep apnea, they had 15 to 30 events per hour, and they weren't stopping um, breathing for very long, short respiratory event duration. This is a marker for a low arousal threshold, and this in turn predicts mortality in men and women. So arousal threshold is one of those phenotypes we really need to be investigating. How can we improve deep sleep? How can we improve the depth of sleep so that the individual is less likely to be aroused as a result of having a disturbance to their breathing? Two factors to improve deep sleep. One is nasal breathing. You breathe through your nose during sleep, your sleep is deeper. The second factor is diaphragmatic breathing. The diaphragm plays a fundamental role, not just in your breathing, but also in your sleep. Diaphragm is connected with the emotions. Upper chest is also connected with the emotions. But diaphragmatic breathing leads to a calmer mind. And a calmer mind, one could argue, that you're more predisposed to a deeper sleep. If you have a stressful day, and if you have a lot on your mind, do you sleep well that night? Or do you find that your sleep is a little bit more shallow, that you're twisting and turning all night long? But what about an individual who has agitation of the mind most days, and they go to sleep and they're, you know, they have a highly stressed life, and their mind is stressed during sleep. That individual is more likely to be a light sleeper. So diaphragmatic breathing, in terms of slow breathing and diaphragmatic breathing, to help activate the parasympathetic response, to help achieve um, calmness of the mind, and also nasal breathing, to help open up to improve the architecture of the airway, to harness nasal nitric oxide, etc. So for arousal threshold, if you're a very light sleeper, pay attention to it. And that would probably include insomnia. Now we also know from Stanford's study back in 2017, and you will find the study if you Google slow breathing in Stanford, they identified a new structure in the brain in the locus corollis and they first identified that in mice and then in humans and they said that this structure is spying on your breathing. If you breathe fast, this structure will relay signals of agitation to the rest of the brain. And if you breathe calm, this structure will relay signals of calm to the rest of the brain and you're less likely to be awoken from sleep. Slow breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, and nose breathing go together. Let's improve sleep quality. Let's reduce the risk from lower arousal thresholds. Improve the depth of sleep, not with sedatives, but by changing breathing patterns.